I want to offer something very positive out to people, but you may not think of it that way. It may not come across as immediately positive, but stick with me. I promise we'll get there in the end. may take a couple minutes to build up to it, but this is a positive video, and it's something to be optimistic about when it comes to comics. Hey everybody, this is Perch. One of the strangest things I think about doing videos, I, like I said, I record these in the car and I also talk with my hands a lot. So I'm sure people are like, I, I'm, I'm driving around, but I'm sure that uh, when I'm at a stoplight and I'm like gesturing with my hands, people think I'm on some really intense conference call. I can only hope, you know, that somewhere in their minds, they're like, man, he's really, he's selling that client. He's really, <laughs> but no, I'm like, I'm talking about, uh, you know, page rates. <laughs> It's a, I don't know. It's funny. Have you ever pulled up next to somebody, by the way, and they're just jamming out on, on some song? Like, I think I said this in a video once. This is happening more and more lately. I think COVID's just breaking down a lot of our, you know, uh, inhibitions in a weird way. <laughs> Cause like they pull up and you get somebody doing like full rock ballad. It's, it's, it's always an awesome thing to see. Anyway, um, this is a positive video, I promise. But it, again, it may not start there. So here is my general pitch. Uh, there's uh, one of the things that I'm I'm super irritated about in comics uh, on on social media or even in my channel when I get comments is people say, "Yep, the industry is dead. It's got to be burned down. It's it's too late. It's terminal. It's 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 got to be burned completely down and then rebuilt." Um, and I, I always kind of hate that reaction because it, it always feels like very. It doesn't feel like a solution. It feels like somebody's just got, you know, they, they picked up a can of gas at the, like, the half-price store, and they've, they've got the extra can of gas, and they've got the matches, and they're like, as long as I have the gas and the matches, I might as well burn something down. So that's kind of how it feels. Um, I think that it's easy to look at comics, and like I do sometimes, I do the video about, like, you know, 37 variant covers, uh, pre previews, where the solicitations make no freaking sense anywhere. Um, you know, the, the kind of the really negative uh, news around when people are getting laid off or comic news sites suck. Or, I mean, I've done plenty of those. And, um, and, and I got some feedback I, I, from somebody I appreciate saying, you know, you, you, you dive too much into the critic, into the negative stuff. And then they're not wrong. Um, I, I try my best to balance the something is wrong with here's a you know, positive way to look at it or here's how we get out of it. But I don't, I don't always get there, to be fair. When you're staring in the face of 37 variant covers, it's like, I mean, it's hard to find the silver lining in that one. I mean, it's like, well, at least issue two won't have 37 variant covers, huh? It's a glass half full. Um, but here's the thing. With very, very rare exceptions, that's part of what I want to talk about in this video, the majority, the vast majority of things in comics are not terminal. Even if they're problems, whether they actually you know, are problems or you just think they're problems and others don't think they're problems, whatever it is, one thing that is consistent about comics, and keep in mind, there's two facts that you can trace back to the 30s, the Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age, whatever we call that other age, um, the, you know, the, the Rob Liefeld age, whatever, whatever ages you want, whatever you name you want to call these ages, two things are incredibly true. One, history repeats itself, like a lot. So if, if, you, uh, if you're in comics and you're going, you know, these are unprecedented times, nope, nope, they're not. We've seen almost everything happen at least once before. And that should give us some confidence. It gives us both confidence and negativity. It gives me negativity because it's hard to watch people make the same mistakes they've made over and over and over again. Uh, that just gets kind of like, ah, yeah, people are stupid. Um, but on the other hand, the positive side of it is, well, we've seen how these mistakes play out. The comic industry is not dead. Therefore, we can feel reasonably certain the comic industry is not going to die again this time. You know, we have enough of a history to know that things will truck along. You know, and, and if I really hate something, if I just wait around long enough, the wheel will turn and life will get better again or things will improve. And I think it's, you know, I think it's not a, you know, head in the sand, optimistic way of looking at things to believe that, you know, things will get better because history tells us and shows us that they will get better. We've had some dark times in comics and the, the, the nearest biggest one is in the 90s. And there is so much revisionist history going on right now, especially from 
Uh, the extreme guys, I, I like Rob Liefeld's um, podcast. I think it's interesting. It's interesting to hear his perspective. It's good. He brings a wealth of knowledge. However, there's one point that kind of gets kind of dodged around. And that's the, the 90s after Image broke and it debuted and there was a lot of excitement about it. And then the issues didn't ship. And then there was the Heroes Were Born bit at Marvel. And then there was the direct market, uh, you know, the newsstand collapse. There, there were so many shops that vanished in the mid to late nineties. And there was a many, many people, um, on, you know, old Usenet on AOL message boards going, the comic industry is dead as we know it. Like a lot of people, including some creators, like it was dark, dark times. Things were looking extremely dire, uh, more so than today. You know, a lot of us look at it today and go, well, you know, the floppy business isn't moving and the retail market seems kind of screwed and direct market and everything else. But but the 90s, things were falling like left and right. And it was a frightening, devastating time for a retailer, certainly, and also for uh, for a lot of comic fans. I, the quality was not the best. I mean, I, I, I hear you. If you love that stuff, if you have a lot of nostalgic feelings for the 90s, you know, good on you. But a lot of people were were checking out like all over the place, you know, somewhere around the time when Wolverine lost his nose and the wasp turned into a insect woman. And, uh, you know, and then they had, you know, the, the uh, image guys come back and they relaunched the heroes. But I mean, some of those some of those the heroes were born stuff. Some of those issues were clunky as hell. Like, I, I'm sorry, this that is not a memorable run. We can go through all the issues, but it's like. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> those aren't those aren't magical comics. I'm just I'm just saying. You know, maybe to some that's fine. But the point here is that no matter how bad it gets, um, things can get rebuilt. And here's maybe the the really big a bit of big good news. The the bit of good news. The the little bit bitty. I don't know. What I'm saying the good news. It's that things can rebound rather fast. It's remarkable. It, it seems like it's taking forever when you're in the middle of things. But shockingly, uh, it just takes a very small handful of comics and life can get really good. Or, you know, if you want to be glass half empty person, really bad. And if you want to take, you know, if you want to see a clear example of this, both ends of the roller coaster, let's just take you back a mere 18 months to the X-Men universe. This was a universe just decimated through a bizarre attempt by Marvel to deprioritize the X-Men in favor of the humans, a rotating cast of uh, writers who, who really did a poor job. You had Bendis come in and just kind of do a hatchet job in many cases to a lot of uh, the X-Men titles. It was not his finest work. Uh, even he admits it was not his finest work. And then you had uh, the X-Men Blue and Gold and that kind of stuff go on. And you like issue number one debuted with an artist who wrote kind of anti-Israel messages hidden in the comic. And it was just a cluster. This was, this was a bad time for comics, for the X-Men. And then they relaunched it. And it's like, okay, now we're going to care. We got Kelly Thompson in here. We got uh, Matt Rosenberg. And now we, now we care. And, of course, you know, then it's like, ah, psych. We knew that this was going to be a short nine issue filler run, or, you know, nine, nine month filler run. And that uh, old uh, Jonathan Hickman was going to come in. So we we're just kind of effing around. And by the way, I hope you enjoy that age of X-Men because uh, that was a special steaming pile just for you. And the, the X-Men, I mean, there were people um, who lifelong X-Men fans who were out. They were like, F it, I'm out. And it was just, it was a dark, dark time the rebellion. It was, it was a bad time. And then Hickman came along and did house of X powers of 10. And even though people wanted to hate it, like the first issue came, you know, like kind of soaring out. And I remember that the, um, uh, the, the, the Richard Meyer, the diversity and comics guy panned it, uh, like this, this issue sucks. And at the time, at that moment, a lot of the Marvel, I mean, everything that Marvel was doing pretty much was what he was saying. It sucked. Uh, it was kind of his bit at the time. And, even like, and, it, and his audience was very anti-Marvel at that moment. And yet, even there, you had, um, you know, you, you had people in the comments like, hey, you got it wrong on this one. And then over the course of the second and third issue, other issues kind of came in. Um, even the critics, including Meyer, like, were like, well, maybe this isn't so bad. And you had people going, holy crap, this is, a, you know, an amazing X-Men run. 
And for the entire House of X powers of 10, with the, with the brief exception of Mr. Sinister, a very, very strange issue featuring Mr. Sinister, by and large, the praise was like off the charts. Finally, it was a rebirth of X-Men. Just amazing X-Men. In the course of three months, it went from the darkest of days to uh, it's, this is maybe the best comic being shipped right now. I remember uh, there were some people, and no joke, who were going, hey, you know what? Maybe we don't, you know, this whole uh, crowdfunding comic skate thing, maybe we, we, you know, we can see an end to this fight because comics are getting better. It's like, ah, hooray. And then, and then six months later, we're not down in the darkest of dark anymore, but it, it's the kind of the wheel has turned again of like, oh, crap, you know, 13 X-Men issues in one month? Good Lord, what are we doing here? So my point in this is look how fast things changed. It went from the world is absolutely on fire, it's screwed, to maybe this is the best comic that's been published by Marvel in the last 10 years, to, ah, crap, it sucks again. Within a year, within 12 to 18 months, we see the pendulum swing wildly from, from point to point. And so when you look at that and you see that and you recognize that history, it means that one of two things. You can either look at it and go, you know what? Sooner or later, everything is going to suck. Or you can look at it and say, well, sooner or later, everything is going to be okay. Your choice. Or I guess there's a third route. You can say, you know what? Sooner or later, things are going to suck and things are going to be good. And uh, I'm going to try to buy the good things, and I'm going to not worry too much about the things that suck, because sooner or later, they'll get better again. And for the things that are good, I'm going to really try and enjoy them as best I can, because I know it will fall apart at some point. And, and you know what? I think that's an optimistic message. I think if you're a comic fan, it's, it's, it, it is. It's, it's recognizing that, you know what? No matter how bad it gets, no matter how bad you want to say, yep, the industry is screwed, burn it all down, it's, it's, it's toast that there is hope. There is hope that a comic, a creator, a thing will come out. It will get better. You're not going to need to burn. You can put down that can of gas. You can go have some ribs, you know, start up a barbecue. I like coals better myself, but you know, hey, gas is okay. You, you, it will get better. And I think that, that there's some hope in that. And I think that it's why let's not jump too much to conclusions of saying, you know, the industry is over, it's terminal, burn it down. Now, I do think there are a couple things that threaten it. I think the price point absolutely does. I think the, uh, you know, the, the at times um, just, you know, it, it, the creators kind of torching their own careers, either through phoning it in with art or getting too dodgy with kind of their own little networks and, and, uh, and gossip and gatekeeping and all that. I think that that causes uh, the recoveries to take longer. I do think it's a problem when some creators who are, you know, half baked and not great at what they do get a position inside the company and then kind of barricade the doors and, and keep it from changing. But even there, sooner or later, the, the dam bursts and good stuff does come out. It doesn't last forever. We've had many, many eras at both of the big companies where you had, you know, a, a collection of scumbags who have gotten in there and kind of run the show for a little while. And it, it always does break down. So take heart. If you hate comics right now, if you think that there's so many wrong things in comics right now, chances are it's going to get better. There's a really good chance it improves. Take it for what it's worth. Hey, uh, what do you think? Is it, is it, have we passed the point of no return? Can things turn around? Will I find that magical bottle of Patron I've always wanted? Leave a comment below and like, subscribe, follow me on social media, all that kind of stuff. Thanks for listening.